So I've had some really nice feedback from the last video about the Osprey. So if you're one of those people, thank you very much indeed. I really appreciate it. It made a, a big difference. One of the interesting facts about Qatar is that it's the only country in the world where there is no natural standing water. And all the greenery that you can see around me, and there's plenty of it just along here, it's all possible because everything is irrigated. <laughs> without the irrigation there would be none of this. In fact what we would actually be living in is this. The ground here is super dry and the desert is hot, arid and inhospitable. Every habitat is built in layers. Providing enough water is a prerequisite. Then come the grasses and wildflowers, followed by invertebrates. The grasslands here are full of grasshoppers, which in turn attract the birds. So we're not far from where I saw the osprey last week. I'm not expecting to see it again this week, uh, that would be <laughs> too much to ask. But there are so many bee eaters around. Unbelievably beautiful birds. And there are quite a few uh, black crowned sparrow larks. Um, I'll see if I can get some pictures of those as well because they, they are quite beautiful. Small little sparrow sized birds which look quite white when you see them against the, uh, the grass. Anyway, let's see what we can see up at this uh, reservoir just up here. This is a common sandpiper, a regular presence to any wetland area. There are blue-cheeked and green bee-eaters here. They gather in noisy social groups darting acrobatically like swallows to catch insects on the wing. Sometimes called the butcher bird, shrikes are anomalies in the bird kingdom. They are killer songbirds catching insects and even small mammals and other birds. They're called butcher birds because of their habit of impaling their victims on thorns. There's a hoopoe just over there. It's in the shadow at the moment. Um, I'll have to see if I can get a, a shot of him when he walks out into the sunlight. They're such beautiful birds with their crests. Amazing looking things. Very beautiful. Let's see, here he comes. Hoopoes are most at home in warm, dry, gently undulating terrain, offering perches, shade and breeding cavities. There's some chaps down there hawking, amazing. I think it's some kind of falcon actually. Um, 
just been out uh, and it's caught something, don't know what. No doubt they'll, they'll let it loose again, I'll see if I can get a shot. Falconry in the Middle East is an ancient pastime. Today a good bird can cost its owner hundreds of thousands of pounds. There is a falcon souk in Doha, which even has its own falcon hospital. The wide wheatear is a small wheatear with contrasting black, brown and buff plumage. Like other wheatears, the pied wheatear is insectivorous, watching for its prey from a perch like this one. are territorial and this pied wheatear is dominated by the much larger Isabelline wheatear. In the scorching desert sun any shade is welcome. This desert wheatear hides under a rusty piece of metal. A greater hoopoe lark with its decurved bill has found a spot under a bush to rest. They are called hoopoe larks because they share the same striking wing pattern with their crested namesakes. Well those stints are doing just what I think I do in this weather. What a lovely idea, just following along underneath that boom, having a shower, staying cool. I've never seen so many stilts in one location before, there must be 30, 35. Moving slowly across the terrain, automatic irrigation booms deliver life giving water to the ground. Stilts and sandpipers follow behind, feasting on the insects drawn to the fresh water and disturbed ground. These birds have proportionately the longest legs of any bird in the northern hemisphere. They can tolerate winds and hot climates without shade and can be found in large flocks on the Rakia farm or posing photogenically like this one on the concrete wall girdling the grey water reservoir. By mastering the supply of water, Qatar has transformed its landscape from bleak and desolate deserts to gardens, fields and farms where birds and other animals can thrive. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe or like it and I'll see you out there. Thank mm -hmm. you.